So I've been trying to print out some pieces of this digger. But I tried to print those two objects. Obviously they're print out upside down. This was the main body of the digger. And this is the digger arm. That came out fine and that didn't. So I don't get why one would print OK and one wouldn't. I've noticed that the, what's this called, FEP. Notice, look at that on the bottom of the FEP plate. I've been really careful with this, but occasionally things do adhere to this bottom film. And it really looks like, I mean, look at that there. It's so damaged. And that is exactly the area where it didn't lift. So it's almost like the coating has come off that area. So I'm going to try and change this sheet in today and see how that goes. So a few minutes on Amazon and I spent more than I was expecting. So uh, these are for another video, as is that. But this was £16. FEP film for DLP 3D printer. There was um, a couple of other versions. There was an official Elegoo one, but that was for five sheets. It was about 23 Might even have been £30, but with a voucher. So I decided to go for this to start with. Remove the eight screws. Remove the 24 screws. Hey, okay, there must be more screws that I didn't know about. Put the new FEP in between the two steel rings and install it. So I got these Allen keys from Allen. No, I got them with the printer. So which one is it? Is it the bigger one? Yeah. All right. So let's undo these. It says eight screws. More than eight there. Let's undo these anyway. I can hear the drum sounding less as I undo it. I think I'll go for some mechanical assistance. It's about time I upgraded my wow stick. Maybe I fix it will sponsor me. Yeah, right. Let's try it with that. I think I need a better um, system of storing my bits than this. I've got to done it by now. Right, here we go. Okay, so how's this going to come out? Will I just be able to gently lever it out? Yeah. All right, I'm going to go and glove up. Shall we go for blue or black gloves today? So today we're going to go for the blue, latex free, vinyl free, powder free gloves. Right, the reason I wanted to put the gloves on is because just underneath the edge of the film I think there's still some resin there. So I don't want to get that all over my hands if I can help it. It should limit, limit your exposure to this stuff. And it's not easy once you get one of these printers. Alright, ah, oh, there are all the other screws but I can just see on the edge of that. There's all of that resin still so let's get some IPA. Clean that off. Put that as they say to the side. So this must be how it gets the tension. We put it between these two sheets first and then it pushes down with the other screws around the outside. So let's try and not get these screws mixed up. Let's pop those on there. Oh, they're not magnetic anyway. Right, let's pop them on there anyway. Anyhow, now is this going to be the same one? No, so that's why I've got a different Allen with it. So let's go for these Allens. Same, same again. Definitely fast forward this. Okay, so I'm using this Allen. Allen key to um, just take the tension off them, untorque them to start with, and then I'll spin them out using the electric screwdriver. OK, 
okay tedious but not difficult so let's try and lift that all right as easy as that that looks that looks okay doesn't look like the resin has got between that one so the resin must be on the other side this is the the film all right I wonder whether you can see that better now but you can see that that's definitely damaged all right so what's my hands doing they look like they're okay but just wipe the side of the gloves just in case right in a foam sleeve is the film on the film they're very staticky i think i've just got one is that film on the outside of it oh please remove the protective film on the surface before use okay that's fair enough so that's one side i'll spend the next 10 minutes getting that off my fingers and there's the other side now both sides have got protective film on i assume that goes over there and that goes over there and that puts the first tension on it just say you might have to force the screws in so i don't know how we're gonna do this let's just start up here put that screw in feels like there should be holes okay so did go in let's do some of the corners first well here we go again so um how am i going to do this this time maybe i'll fast forward this and uh cue a different drum beat for a change So did I trigger anyone by not going round one by one? There's definitely the opportunity to cross thread some of these and that one's not gone in right but actually when it said that you might need to force it down you don't actually need to force it but um, it goes through the film quite easily but it's just making it um, making sure you haven't cross threaded it which is difficult most of them are going right now let's tighten them all up a little bit and I will go around the proper way now you're going to lose the gloves definitely less fiddly without the gloves on I think I should have gone for the black nitrile gloves today It'd been a bit less rustly as well wouldn't it so this is the bit where it gets its full tension then assume is there a specific way I need to put the screws back in, does it say? No, ensure that it's clean and tensioned correctly. Huh. Who knows whether this is tensioned correctly or not. Definitely with this, this is the way to go. Not to say you can't do it with a supplied Allen key, but less grief this way. Let's start with these, I think. Oh. I'm worried that I'm going to slip and um, go through this. I suppose that's why I've got five, but I don't really want to, at least today, I don't really want to have to go through the um, tightening all those other ones down. It's almost as bad as changing a Mac keyboard, this. Right, I'm gonna concentrate for this and just really fast forward this one. Okay, managed not to do too much damage or indeed any, so I'm now going to tighten them, put the final torque on them, and hopefully this will push it down. It doesn't seem to be pushing it down very much at the side, but I really with these I didn't even bite. I just broke through the film to begin with. Oh, still some way to go. Oh yeah, there's loads of way to go, so 
This is exciting just hearing the noise this makes. I assume that that's okay. Let's listen. Definitely sounds like a toy drum now. And another scary part. Let's now go around and trim this off. I'm trying to do it sort of diagonally to cut against some of the aluminium. So I think that was about a half, amazingly about a half an hour job and it still looks quite, is it right? So I'm just looking at these. Some of these are proud of, proud of the surface and others aren't. I, I reckon I need to go tighter on some of these. So I'll just go around one more and tighten it as much as I can. So maybe that's what these guys meant when it said ensure it's tensioned properly. Well, who knows what the tension is, but there's a voyage of discovery about this printer anyway. Oh, now it's interesting now that these have definitely got to a stop. There's a definite bit where they are at tension. So it's a case of keep doing it until they lock. There's the lock. So these are all another quarter turn, I think. Or a bit more lock. So you can definitely tell on this Elegoo Mars Pro that when it's the correct tension, because the screw definitely stops turning, it doesn't get hard to turn. You can feel a definite, I've finished turning now. So this last one, I hope, shouldn't, yeah, that's all pinched up now. So that's definitely the way to do it. So I'm not going to put that down on the flat surface now. I'm just going to give it a bit of spray dust in just to get the goop off. Hopefully that um, <laughs> is just condensation. So once this is back on the printer, I'm going to print the other two bits of the of the gnome that I was printing. The base of the um, little digger, which is this. And uh, I think I'm going to print out one of the tracks. So I had one of the tracks work, the other one didn't. So I'll add this track. And as I've got a little bit more space, I'm going to print out a gnome again because I printed the half gnome out before and uh, may as well use some of that space on the print and see whether this works while I'm waiting for this to evaporate. Okay, let's fit this back into my Mars Pro. Now I noticed someone complaining about how the fact that this doesn't have a, a protector on. So one of the things that I've had delivered today I'm going to fit a protector on it but at the moment I just want to do things one by one so that if I introduce anything different in it I can check what bit has broken it or what bit has made it better so I'm just going to give this a little bit of an IPA clean a couple of little bits that have got in there tried to leave the lid on this I do think this screen might be going to get damaged anyway but Slide it on. I hope this doesn't leak now, but I think it's all been done tight enough, so it should be all right. And the resin that I rescued from it earlier. So I kept this in a sealed container. Uh, so let's just put it back in there. Oh, look at that. Oh. Looks like washing up liquid, doesn't it? Oh, yum. And let's put the build plate back on. This is also getting knocked about. I've got another solution for that, but we'll come back to that. So let's put him on. Lid it up. All right, so let's go and put the digger body and a few of the dwarves onto this plate 
and now I just add the supports and I'll try a reprint and see if it works now. So that's them copied to the USB, always the wrong way around. That's copied to the USB stick. I think I'm just gonna home the platter first, just in case I've mucked something up. I'm just bringing the platter down, you'll see it in a second. Sorry about the fan noise, by the way. I've got my finger over the stop button, just in case uh, I've put the that in wrong or for some reason I've um, misaligned something so I can hit stop that's all right so it's coming down now and it will go into the resin and come back up a little bit and hopefully we won't hear any bump bump noises which normally means something's gone wrong so just a couple of clicks and it's gone in right so back out Go to print, dig a bits, and that's what I want. So let's zoom in on that. So that was the last view I had on Chitu Box. So let's start that printing. And once it's printed the first layer, I've got three hours, 35 minutes to. About three and a half hours later, got about half hour left to do. The trouble is with small prints is that you have to look through this little gap. I'm never quite sure whether it's worked or not. This is definitely stuff there, so that's good. But just at the far right of the screen, you can see there's looks like something's peeling, but I'm not sure. But it's looking promising. There's definitely objects there. Let's hope I've got a full digger now. So there's a bit when you're 3D printing, when you've gone out and you've just left it. I've watched a bit of telly this afternoon. I've just had my dinner. And when you come back to the printer, it's platter is in the air and you're thinking, has this worked or not? I've not looked at it yet. I can see through the viewfinder, but here we go. That is looking good. So it looks like my FEP film replacement has been a success. That's that little end that I thought had lifted. I'm just going to put the slicer, fish slice underneath that. And hopefully I can bit by bit prise this off. There we go. So in I go with that. So that seems to have been successful. I've got all my uh, parts now. Another gnome, a emergency backup gnome. Here are my uh, original ones that did work. This is the gnome that was in two. If you see closely, you can see the split line there down the middle. I've just painted him with primer. I find that uh, when you first get clear print, out of the printer it's hard to see the detail so quite often it's nice if you just gently paint it with primer and then you can see them so all I'm going to do now for the rest of this is just cut these off the sprue and quickly assemble it So here's my result with the new FEP film. So uh, this was one of the original prints. So if you remember, this worked perfectly, as did that one, um, but this completely failed. So I did this hollow. Can't remember whether I did it hollow the first time, but well, that's come out great. I've printed the other track. 
super glued them together they're supposed to be snap fit they were um, it's slightly off level there but that doesn't matter it's a gnome contraption so I just thought the trouble is you can't really see the detail of them um, as they stand as they come out so I'm just going to primer these but I've just got some game colour stonewall grey I'll just put a couple of blobs of that in and uh, I've got a little bit of water not a lot the grey is a little bit thick but I don't want to put too much water in either because it doesn't always bond but uh, let's just really quickly now paint this So there they are drying. If you want to see a, a longer version of me painting this, have a look at my Come Prime With Me series, which I'm going to be starting. <laughs> and uh, you can just watch me do that in real time. So when I was having those issues at the start with this FET plate, obviously putting the new one on worked. It doesn't seem to be degraded anyway by having this being a generic but definitely worth doing. I hope you enjoyed this change. Slightly different video from me. I think I'm going to do more stuff from my resin printer. Maybe an adventures with my Elegoo Mars. If you'd like to see more of these videos, please thumbs up. And please consider subscribing if that's your sort of thing. Okay, bye.